messing around Better think of your future So now I got the big 60 amp maxi fuse here for the battery that that's going to hook up the power to the power distribution panel that I got inside and now I'm trying to figure out which one of these fuses is my uh, accessory switch I already did the work and bottom line is there is no accessory position out of these fuses here it's either on constantly or on when the engine is running or the engine run position so I had to pick one of those spots and I found one over here which turned out to be the uh, rear trailer lights and it's on when you turn on the ignition or ignition power not accessory power but that's okay I got that timer in there that'll that'll you know give me power so here it had a 15 amp fuse right in this spot here and this is called an add a fuse so here's your in original inline 50 amp fuse that'll work with that but then on top of it you have a piggyback 3 amp fuse that I added which will power my uh, relay switch on the distribution panel so all I gotta do is you can see the prongs are about the same I just stick that on right on there and that's a piggyback so now like I said before this will not turn on in this position regular accessory power it has to be on engine run when everything is on uh, I could dig deeper and find a signal but this is okay for me uh, so I'm not gonna dig any deeper but that's something you guys should uh, be aware of if you if you're just sitting down idling uh, and you want to conserve some gas or whatever it's nice to have it in just the accessory position only and not the engine run where it it sucks up more juice as far as battery power but then an accessory all you have is just your accessories that are on so now I got power hooked up so like I said before this is my constantly hot terminal strip here and they're all fused with uh, regular blade automotive fuse fuses here and right now we got 12 volts on there battery power this is my accessory side it should be off and there's no power there so when I hit the uh, ignition switch this should be powered on which will activate this power tamer and this power tamer will control the relay here and this relay will feed power into this power strip here and then I should get power on this strip here so let's test that out so now on the, I turn on the ignition this is my ignition sense I got 12 volts there that'll put a ground on this relay controller here to activate the relay and I have 12 volts on my accessory strip here now remember I'm going to turn off the ignition now take out take away the keys this should be activated still I should I should not have 12 volts in this spot here but the relay is timed so uh, this will still be activated until this device times out giving power to all my devices so now I got the stopwatch I turned off the uh, ignition so this is my ignition sense here hooked up to that relay in the front there or that fuse in the front there Oh, I still got power there because when the uh, lights go out then I know it's okay it turned off now that fuse should be de-energized and it is I have no more juice going into this device here but I should still have juice in my 12 volt accessory switch line here and I do so this is timing down I don't know how long I'm gonna time it to see how long that would be and we'll see from there but if this was in service now uh, the radios all should be uh, on constantly until that device times out and then after that this strip will de-energize the, the relay will de-energize and power to those devices will drop out 
Well guys, I did something different this time. I took out the power tamer that was here because it was taken a half hour before the whole unit uh, turns off and that's just a little bit too much time for me so I'm just going to go straight with the uh, the ignition switch power feeding directly into my relay here to activate the relay and the relay will apply voltage to uh, this strip over here for my accessory breakouts uh, circuits so so far I got two circuits run so far uh, 7.5 amp on this line here uh, like I said I rewired this fuse this relay here to operate with the ignition switch which is this green wire here it's already hooked up in the front fuse panel those two circuits that I've installed so far are right here and they're feeding my 12 volt accessory jack here so now when I turn off the vehicle after about 10 seconds or so this will turn off when I turn off the vehicle these two are on constantly no matter if the keys are in or not this will be switching on and off with the ignition on 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 the steering wheel there this guy right here so that's what I wanted so I could power up my XM radio or GPS or something and, and not worry about the device draining my batteries after I leave the vehicle and whatever I need here constant power then yeah I'll use these guys here but for now they're not going to be used now guys I'm going to install my ham radio first because it's like on the top of that comp center console so I'm just going to go in, into order here and this is the cable this is the cable that's hooked up to the antenna on top of the roof and it's uh, antenna spot number three so I got four of these suckers up there and this is the third one from the uh, towards the back and we're gonna put in a PL259 connector and it's your most common connectors out there especially in, in the ham world uh, it's, it's the most prevalent connector out there there's others but this is what I'm doing now because this is what I have to install so what I, I want to do is I want to put in my sleeve first this guy right here just slip over the the cable like that and then your tightening uh, knob here whatever it's called so that goes in first the second and now you strip some uh, some of the insulation out and what I like to do is I like to use the, this as a guide uh, instead of using like you know rulers and stuff like that so I just want to go like maybe a quarter of an inch past the, the top of the uh, of the connector there and that's how much I'm going to take off so that kind of looks like almost two inches inch and a half something like that so I just want to carefully just strip away the uh, insulation strip that back and now what you want to do is uh, I like to cut like right here in the middle cut the rest of that insulation off with some really uh, sharp cutters okay some really sharp diagonal cutters here so you just want like maybe a little bit under of an inch of shielding and there you go and then you want to flare out all the, the, the shielding out I kind of like to keep the integrity of the of the braid but just kind of like flare it out some just like so so now I take this as my guide again and it's going to be positioned just like so so I'm gonna strip the inner insulation off just a little bit like just where it starts to go into the center tube there and that's how much I'm gonna strip off and sometimes you just crush your little braid job here and there's your center insulation there and I just twist them together this one is this particular cable has a braided center conductor so I kinda of wanna twist it together like so and now you fit your your 
your connector on there the whole thing will go in there and that's how much you have on the outside there now you take your little sleeve there and you push that all the way up as press it all the way up to to the bottom of, of, of the top part of the connector there as much as you can that's what's going to hold the whole thing in place you get yourself a pair of uh, RJ58 crimpers and you crimp it down I like to go a second time around towards the bottom so right now that bottom part is crimped pretty well now you can take this part and screw it and screw it in this way and I'll just stay right there So now you see this open end over here. This is an older type of uh, PL259 or is it PL239? Get it just right. And what you want to do is you want to flood that center cavity there, that hollow end there with solder. So I got me a uh, butane powered. Take a little bit of flux to this. Always want to have a clean tip as well. Now everything's uh, in place for me to solder this together. And the cool thing about this connector is that it's really not that precision, precise. You could put in a big old blob of solder in there. Not too much, but you know, within reason. So now I got most of that cavity filled and I want to tip it over to the side there so it won't you know go back into the cavity any more than it has to now what I like to do is kind of like tap solder in there I fill up my tip there and just it kind of builds it up so I just tack on some solder, a glob of solder there to make it into a nice little bubble. That'll protrude a little bit outside the uh, connector there. I'll just leave that running for a little bit. What I like to do now is just clean it up a little bit. And there you have it. A PL259 or is it 239? <laughs> Can't remember. Uh, connector. It's not my greatest job, but this will last you a lifetime pretty much if you take care of it. And that's all it is. So my ham radio is hooked up. The ham radio doesn't have a uh, ignition sense wire to turn it off when you turn off the ignition. It just has the one main power line there and ground. That is it. So I got my ground hooked up and I have the uh, ham radio power, main power going into my accessory switched terminal strip here. And I have it uh, hooked up to a 15 amp fuse which is what it's rated for. So that's going to the front. I made my connection with the uh, transmission line on top to my antenna. And that's uh, slot number three right there. That's my ham radio slot right there. And I need uh, three more radios to go there. So if I go to the front cab here, there's my ham radio. It's powered up. There's the connector that I've just made hooked up. Uh, if you remember, I, I hooked up these guys over here, the 12-volt uh, accessory uh, connector there, cigarette lighter thing. That's hooked up, so I'm going to turn off the ignition there completely. And after, after a few seconds, the whole thing should turn off. 
see my uh, my daylight running lights there they're, they're still on and after a little bit they go out that took about 30 seconds and there my radio went off the headlights went off and my cigarette lighter accessory thing went off so I know for sure that my accessory switch and that distribution panel that I have in the back there is working so now this guy is ready to be the first radio to be placed into service and it'll go right there on top now I got uh, three more radios to do and I'm gonna keep this in the outside just so I have room to do my connections inside here